Today we're going to talk about breaking through to your next level of performance. What I'm going to talk about in a little bit is two methods that you can use to have your best workouts ever and your best races that you've ever dreamed about. I guarantee you, if you adopt these two methods that we're going to talk about, you'll race like you never have before. They're going to have such an impact on your training performance and your racing performance, you probably won't believe it's true. They're short. In fact, the first one takes about 36 seconds to do. Uh, the second one takes about 10 minutes or so to do. And they're easy, but they take a lot of work. You have to be really consistent with using this technique. Before we get into the two techniques specifically, I want to give you a little background, just one example of what a difference mental training makes in performance. Many of you know that I was second in the Olympic trials in rowing. Well, the three months leading up to the Olympic trials, I was training with a partner of mine who was just head to head. He probably won more of our practice races than I did. We were almost always neck and neck. So then we got to the Olympic trials. And everyone was expecting the two of us to be in the finals together with a couple other guys. And there was that expectation and people had heard we were going fast and that sort of thing. And when you get to an event, especially something you've been working four years to get to, there's a ton of tension and nerves there. The difference is how you deal with those. So if you get up to the starting line of a race and you've got butterflies in your stomach, you've got two choices essentially. Those butterflies can either choke off wind and your, your uh, air supply and just get you so tense and so tight that you have a bad race. Or those butterflies can be fuel. And that's how I used to think of them. So when we got to the Olympic trials, I went in and I ended up finishing second. My training partner, unfortunately, finishing, I can't even remember where, somewhere like uh, 12th or 11th or 12th. The difference between second place and 12th place had absolutely nothing to do with physical capability. He and I were neck and neck during nearly every training session. The difference between second in the country and 12th in the country was all right here. So being able to harness that mental power is critical to success. And if you can do that every time you practice, if you can practice it every day when you go out for your workout, then it's going to come real easily when it gets to game day. What happens to most people is they put a glass ceiling on where they think their abilities are. Whether it's because they've been told that by a coach, whether it's because that's the best that they did in the past, they think, okay, well, things are starting to go really well. That's why you see young guys, especially guys who are maybe starting out in cross country and they run their first race and they think, God, I'm, I'm doing too well. And then they say, this, it can't be this easy. I can't be having this much speed because I've just started running this cross country race. And then they trip and fall. And you've seen stuff like that all the time where people start to get to a whole new level and then they don't think they deserve it. Well, the truth of the matter is you do deserve it. And you have to live in those moments of happiness and, and speed and acceleration. You have to talk to yourself all the time and say, I can't believe how easy this is. I can't believe I'm just floating along. I can't believe that I'm going this fast and I can go faster. It's, it's really what you say to yourself that's critical. There's a famous psychologist who says that fear is excitement without a breath. If you think about that, it's very true. It's the same physiological reaction that you get when you're scared as when you're excited. That's why roller coasters are so popular. But when you're scared, if you don't breathe and you don't consciously control yourself, then you're going to have all the negative outcroppings of being scared. Tension, lack of performance, lack of focus, all the things that happen when you get scared and nervous. And you can apply this to life as, as well as athletics. If you breathe and you breathe air into it, then it can turn into excitement. And then when you feel those butterflies welling up in your stomach, you can say, that's fuel. <sighs> this is so exciting. So let me give you two techniques for breathing before practice and before race. The first one, and it's called a four by four. You take four breaths and you breathe in for a count of four, you hold it for a count of four, and you exhale for a count of four. And what I like to do is I like to put my goal or my focus when you're holding it. So in two, three, four, when you hold for two, three, four, you say a time or a place or something like that. So if it's, if it's lead bill and you want the big buckle, you go in two, three, four, sub nine, sub nine, sub nine, sub nine, oh, two, three, four. And so you do that four times. 
It takes 36 seconds to do that, but it gets your mind focused, it gets you present in the workout, it gets you starting to create an expectation. That's the short version. That's something you should do before every workout. No matter what the workout is, set a goal for it, know how to measure that goal, and then do a quick four by four to get focused on the goal and kind of leave everything out for the rest of the day. And, and that's gonna get you set up for a great workout. And it, the second method that I use all the time is a little more in depth, but it's the same idea with breathing. And I start out with four seconds. Four seconds in, hold for four, out for four. Eight seconds in, hold for eight, out for eight. 16 seconds in, hold for 16, out for 16. 16 seconds in, hold for 16, out all at once. And then what I do is I do a, a scan of my whole body. I start out with either the top of my head or my toes, and it, I mix it up from time to time. But I start out and I say, okay, my toes are warm, they're heavy, they're relaxed. My feet are warm, heavy, relaxed, they're sinking down into the, the bed or the couch or wherever I am. And I go body part by body part until I get to a completely relaxed state. And that takes usually two minutes to, to run through the body. Then what I do is I picture myself going down a set of stairs and I count backwards, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, down these stairs. And at the bottom of the stairs is a big old easy chair with a screen on it. And that screen is going to play my race or it's going to play my practice, whatever I decide to be focusing on and doing the visualization. But I'm seeing myself, I'm laying back in that chair and I watch the race. And I watch the race and I hear the sounds and I feel the feelings and I get the sense of the weather and the noises and the crowd. And seeing that in like you're watching a movie in a surround sound gives you a huge opportunity to develop confidence and an expectation of your race. And I would I would definitely do this once a week if you're gonna do a you know a big race. If you're leading up to a race like Leadville or Kona or something like that, this exercise works great. The more you do it, the better you get and the more like reality it becomes. So if you go down and you're watching that screen, then what you do is you want to play through everything from the race. You want to see the street, you want to see the, the trail, you want to get a feel for the rock, whatever it is. Try and get some pictures so you have good pictures in your head. And then try and get a feel for weather. But the most important thing is you're going to watch this race or this event three or four times. As you watch this race or this event three or four times, have stuff go wrong. Right? Have the, uh, an oar get caught in the water. Have one of your, um, you know, take a fall if you're doing a rock climbing thing. Take a, uh, you know, a fall on your bike. And then see how you respond to it and tell yourself to respond to it quickly and get back up and see the results becoming spectacular. Because I've seen so many people who are, who are doing a great job at Leadville and they're on a pace to do sub nine and, and get that big belt buckle and they get a flat tire. Now, I can change a flat tire on just about any bike in under five minutes. It's a nine hour race. So a five minute little, little setback like that, yeah, it might be the best thing that ever happened because maybe you can get off, you know, you stretch your muscles a little bit, you take five minutes, you put a tube in there and, and you know, you're off and running. But a lot of people look at something like that, especially if it's early in the race, as just a catastrophe and it sets the tone for the rest of the race. So the visualization is a great antidote to that. You can get in and you can picture that visualization. You can see that tire puncture and you going back in, fixing it, go through the rest of the race in your mind, and then see you coming in at you know 845, 850, whatever your, your goal is to get that big belt up. But that's one of the keys to visualization is you've got to see things going wrong and then you gotta see yourself bounce back. You gotta see an opponent, if you're going head to head against someone, taking the lead and then you taking it back from them. Those are really the keys to visualization. That first four by four, do it every workout. Every time you get a uh, get ready to do something, 36 seconds. Close your eyes, do the breath, get your goal for the workout. Guarantee you, you'll have much better workouts than you've had in the past. And you just let everything from the day go and focus only on the goal of the workout. At least once a week, do that in-depth workout. And you'll really find that in-depth visualization. You'll really find that it changes the way you approach a race. And then when you get to the race, man, enjoy those butterflies. That used to be the best part for me, was sitting at the starting line with someone holding the end of my boat, just getting ready to explode and, and jump off that line. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope this really helps get you to the next level of your performance. If you like it, go ahead and hit subscribe, and be sure to share it with your friends. 
And please leave any ideas you have down in the comments or maybe hit me on Twitter. It's at PJ Sweeney. I'm Patrick Sweeney. Until next time, live big.